This is the audiobook version of Red Pandemic, The Global Marxist Cult by Emmett Connor, published by Omnia Veritas, narrated by Emmett Connor. Visit www.resolvingor.com for more information. The publisher's website is www.omnia-veritas.com. Red Pandemic, The Global Marxist Cult, Recording 1, Preface. We can see that the world has been undergoing profound, extraordinary changes in recent times. We've also seen that these colossal changes are not merely circumstantial or the result of some sort of organic societal evolution or other factors beyond humanity's control, but changes that have been encouraged and supported by certain motivated movements, organizations and individuals. In 2020, we saw the COVID pandemic become a universally life-changing event, a situation that impacted virtually the population of the whole world. The Black Lives Matter protests and riots of the same year dominated the headlines in the Western world, creating repercussions in many countries, though most intensely and predictably in the US. We've seen the climate alarmist movement gain even more momentum. We've been told that going green is so crucial that if it's not achieved, it will lead to inevitable global catastrophe unless immediate action is taken. This seemingly applies even in countries whose carbon dioxide output is comparatively infinitesimal in the global scheme of things, such as Ireland. We have seen massive changes being pushed in matters of sex, sexuality, gender and relationships, and not just involving adults, but bizarrely adolescents and children. There has been an intensification of the LGBTQ movement and the proliferation of trans rights organisations. The so-called Pride marches have been a regular feature on the streets of many of the world's cities. We have also seen a disturbing emphasis on the issue of paedophilia from some quarters, and not a hardening on the issue, as any reasonable person would subscribe to, but actually a softening, a normalization. It's strange that something which has been previously regarded by many as a mental illness, or just downright evil, is now being suggested by some as being basically just another form of sexual orientation. Mass immigration has been a very divisive and impactful issue worldwide, in Europe in particular. However, it has not been a two-way street. It is overwhelmingly the mass movement of people mostly from third world areas into generally more prosperous, stable and civilised Western countries. This was sometimes packaged as being a reasonable, natural organic movement of large amounts of people from one area to another. Yet it is encouraged, promoted, coordinated and justified by the establishment at a national level and also by international conglomerate organisations such as the United Nations and the European Union. It has also been packaged as a movement of refugees from war-torn areas, but this is clearly untrue for the majority of the masses considering the sheer numbers and non-war-torn countries of origin in question. Others reasonably retort that these are economic migrants coming for a better life in the West. There has also been an increase in anti-white rhetoric. At first glance, it's most apparent in the US, thanks to the English-speaking West's interest in American affairs. But this racist rhetoric is also present in other parts of the world in varying degrees. Some countries are undergoing changes more drastically than others. Ireland, a country that is relatively geographically isolated compared to the rest of Europe, and previously regarded as being Christian Catholic and traditional to a degree, has seen change at an alarming rate. There were noticeable constitutional referendums to change the law on gay marriage and abortion, and the changes are still coming. Considering the speed at which that country is being transformed, It's almost as if it's being forced to catch up with others, as it was not becoming progressive quickly enough. Looking at world events, we could merely say that not everyone agrees with these changes, but this is a massive understatement. Indeed, there's a growing movement of individuals from all over the world who are objecting to, or actively opposing, this global revolution. In fact, once we put all the distractions to one side, We can see that what's transpiring is nothing less than conflict between those who welcome these colossal changes, this revolution, and those who do not. That most primary question of why must be asked. Why are these changes happening? And why are they happening now in this time and in relatively quick succession? Why so much revolutionary activist mentality? Why so many divisions between different groups and in society in general? Why are so many of these groups claiming oppression of some kind? 
Why do we hear all this talk of social justice? Why is it that often, whenever you want to express an opinion that is not politically correct in public, you expect immediate contradiction almost by default? Why is it that eventually even the mere thought of expressing an idea like this can often make one feel uncomfortable? Why does political correctness now seem to be a cornerstone of society that our behaviours must comply with? Why can non-compliance often result in dire consequences for those who contradict this status quo? Why are we seeing an intensification of the phenomenon of virtue signalling? Why is this behaviour the go-to behaviour of anyone in a position of influence in our world? Why are we observing it to a nauseating degree and frequency? Are those who engage in virtue signalling actually exceptional human beings, as they would like us to believe? Or are there other reasons why they are behaving like this? Why is it that the state apparatus in Western countries insists that we engage in pathological altruism and try to save the world at the expense of our own countries and populations? Why have they been constantly re-injecting this message into the psyche of the masses? Why are we told that Western countries have an obligation to accept a never-ending stream of migrants, even though our governments cannot even manage our countries with population levels as they are? Why is it that countries like Sweden and Germany, who are at a much more advanced and catastrophic stage of migration saturation, have still been obliged to import them, despite these countries now being in dire straits? Why does this suicidal behaviour continue, regardless of the obvious results? Why this extreme dominance of emotions over logic? Why is it that the mainstream media in Western countries constantly show us how wonderful multiculturalism is, and regularly feature foreigners who have integrated into our societies, yet the almost systematic assault, rape and murder of indigenous Europeans daily by migrants hardly makes the news? Conversely, why is it that the killing or shooting of gang members, dangerous junkies and other criminals are now being held aloft by the mainstream media as horrific crimes against humanity if they are not white? Why is it that we are regularly reminded of the suffering of non-white people in Africa or the Middle East, yet government-approved discrimination and violence towards white people in South Africa is ignored? Why are we being told in Western countries to care for and respect other groups, but this attitude is not generally reciprocated? Why these double standards? Where does this blatant, racist disregard for white people come from? Why, if you raise these points, will you be contradictorily and bizarrely labelled a racist? Why, despite the numerous, genuine, ongoing problems and evils in our world, are we being incessantly told that racism is one of the worst, if not the worst? Why is it that when criminal George Floyd is killed in the US by a white police officer, it's cause for the whole world to take a knee? Who or what is making the decision which incidents the world should be made aware of and get upset over? Why, in a world where there is a death every few seconds, are some being emphasised in this way? Why are our governments and institutions spending time, energy and resources on bizarre, perverted initiatives such as the sexual education of our young? Why their almost predatorial and forceful attitude when doing this? Why do we hear things like queer theory and heteronormativity? Why the recent phenomenon of males and females saying they are gender non-binary, believing that they are neither male nor female? Where are all the experts explaining that this is impossible? Why is there a forceful insistence by some governments that children who want to have sexual reassignment surgeries should not have to consult their parents before having their genitalia butchered and ending up sterile? Why are we being told that we must call a person who is clearly male a she? or a person who is clearly female, a he? Why must we call others by the pronouns they or them? Why are parents and teachers getting in trouble for calling the young by the apparently wrong term? Why are subjects that should be emphasised more in schools, such as history, national culture and indigenous languages, now marginalised or neglected entirely in favour of more progressive subjects? Why are our children being encouraged to become publicly active quasi-political revolutionaries and involve themselves in issues such as climate change when they are barely old enough to tie their own shoelaces? Why are we being told that young boys need to be educated not to rape girls, to combat something called rape culture? 
Why do we see the weird inappropriate practice of drag queen story time? What is this supposed to achieve? What knowledge, qualifications or life skills do drag queens possess that is of benefit to our children exactly? Does trying to appear like a woman, if you are a man, require knowledge or skill? Of all the brilliant men and women in the world who could be presented as role models to our children, why these odd, unremarkable characters? Why is it that open criticism and state-approved marginalization of Christianity is permitted, but criticism of other religious denominations is not allowed? Why is it that furthermore, as is the case with Islam, a non-Christian denomination can be actively promoted and supported by the state? Why this double standard, particularly in a time where the notion of equality is sacrosanct? Why have we seen white, non-Muslim political figures all across the West speaking and acting in fake solidarity with Islam and Muslims? Why is it that any criticism of Judaism or Jews is considered condemnable and anti-Semitic, yet criticism of Christianity and Christians is not only permitted, but encouraged and fashionable? Why this bias? Why is it that we constantly hear terms like equality, diversity, multiculturalism, compassion and solidarity, and they are always emphasized as being positive? Why are they continuously being chanted, like the mutterings of a cult? Why do we hear an almost never-ending list of terms, conversely, that are used as slurs, such as homophobe, misogynist, xenophobe, islamophobe, transphobe, racist, climate change denier, anti-vaxxer, conspiracy theorist, fascist, Nazi, etc. Why do we hear terms like vaccine hesitancy spring up when the COVID vaccine appeared on the scene? Why do we hear all this talk of hate speech? Why do we hear people using the word hate when referring to criticism? Why is it being used to dismiss criticism out of hand? And what kind of criticism is it being used to dismiss, neutralize exactly? All kinds? Are only certain kinds. Why do we hear all these people talking about being oppressed or talking about the oppression of others? Why all the emphasis on identity politics? Why do we often hear so many organizations, politicians and media talk about the far right? Why do we hear other terms to describe certain concepts such as victim blaming and slut shaming? Why do we hear things like toxic masculinity but not toxic femininity? Why do we hear things like mansplaining, but not womansplaining? Why do we hear things like white privilege or male privilege, but not black privilege or Asian privilege or female privilege? Is it because only white males have all the privilege? Are white males privileged, but black or Asian people or women are not? Or is there another reason why we are hearing these unequal double standards and terms? Why do we hear terms like critical race theory? cultural relativism and moral relativism. Where are all these relatively new terms coming from? Why does it seem in the last few decades like the world is filling up with revolutionary activists? Why are many of them associated with universities somehow or our students themselves? In the US, during the Black Lives Matter unrest, why is it that these student activists are so fanatical to the point where they will get themselves hurt or run over by vehicles? What has them so willing to get themselves maimed or killed? Why are these activists, many of them kids, so completely possessed with this revolutionary energy and detached from reality? Why do they seem so intensely brainwashed? Why is it that the US was plunged into such violent unrest on such a large scale over the death of one person when people die there all the time, as they tend to do in other countries also? Why is it that ordinary everyday people are forced to get out onto the streets and deal with these revolutionary mobs? Why are these people forced to do the job that the police or state forces are, in many cases, refusing to do, to stop these aggressive mobs from destroying their homes and businesses? Why do these revolutionaries attack these ordinary everyday people as if they are the problem, when in fact they themselves are the problem? How can they have it so completely backwards? Why is it that the worldwide patriotic movement, which is opposed to international totalitarianism or globalism, is harassed by these revolutionary or rebel groups who, by default, are serving the system they say they are opposed to? How is it that they, seemingly contradictorily, 
now serve and protect the system. Again, how can they have things so upside down? Why the inversion? Why are all these revolutionary activists basically identical as if they all rolled off the same production line at a factory? Why do the ones in Canada seemingly think the same as the ones in Australia? Why do the ones in the US use the same terminology and catchphrases as the ones in Ireland? Why do the ones in New Zealand act the same as the ones in Sweden? Whether you are in Toronto or Tokyo, Perth or Portland, London or Los Angeles, Stockholm or Stanley, Dublin or Dubai, Cape Town or Canberra, Amsterdam or Aberdeen, Seattle or Seville, Paris or Prague, Moscow or Monaco, Rome or Reykjavik, San Paolo or San Francisco, Santiago or San Jose, Edmonton or Edinburgh, Berlin or Beijing, Buenos Aires or Bangkok, New York or New Delhi, Chicago or Shanghai, Washington or Wellington, Helsinki or Hell's Kitchen, why are these people all virtually identical in their attitudes, behaviour and speech? How can this be, despite all the varieties of locations, languages and cultures? Why are they so undiverse? Why do they all have the same views and promote the same agendas? Why do they all call people who don't agree with them racists, fascists and Nazis etc. and with the same level of animosity? Why is it that the mainstream media in Ireland is behaving the same way, more or less, as it is in other Western countries? Why are the mainstream media in the UK, Canada, Australia, France, Spain, Italy, Germany, Sweden, etc., behaving in a very similar fashion, albeit with slight variations? Why are they all more or less singing from the same hymn sheet? Why is it that a person can happily tweet, post, publish the most degenerate, dumb things as long as they conform with political correctness? Yet if they criticise PC culture with venom, these opinions may be suppressed. Why is it that some are banned online while others are not? Who decides what is right and what is wrong in this case, and what is their reasoning? Why are some opinions permitted, yet others are suppressed, and what types of opinions are they? Why is it that there is a state-approved emphasis on mental health in society right now? Yet we have the enormous global mental health problem of indoctrination coming from the same system. Why do we have this problem of rampant mass psychopathy in the world right now, which the overwhelming majority of experts never address? Why do all these politically correct terms, concepts, agendas seem to dominate the political, social, cultural, educational and media discourse in recent decades and with an alarming rise of saturation in those areas? Why is it that we cannot even look at a newspaper or turn on the TV or radio without being constantly reminded of them? These things we apparently must focus on climate change, social justice, inequality, racism, etc. Are they serious issues we should be genuinely concerned about, or are we being told to focus on them for other reasons? Why are all these issues and behaviours manifesting globally and almost simultaneously, as if coordinated? Why does it seem like we are living in this zombie apocalypse, where we have brainless millions who are unable to form their own opinions, and who all think, speak and act the same way? Why are we experiencing this pandemic of crazy, coordinated, civilization-destroying behaviour as if we are dealing with a massive global cult? This was the audiobook version of Red Pandemic, The Global Marxist Cult by Emmett Connor, published by Omnia Veritas. Recording 1, Preface, narrated by Emmett Connor. Visit www.resolvingor.com for more information. The publisher's website is www.omnia-veritas.com.